Hi everybody, how are you? It's great to be back. Here we are in Itamar, it's Friday. We're going to be completing the um, book of Bereshit, the Shabbat. And we are in the last portion of Vayichi. Um, I want to open up by relating a quick um, story. I'm sure you've heard of it. Just a couple, what was it, just a couple of, maybe not even two weeks ago, the Israeli army went into the city of Jenin, a very, very hot terrorist city in Judea and Samaria not far from us here in the northern Samaria, and um, they entered a misgad. The misgad is a, um, you know, is a house of prayer of the Muslims, a mosque, and the, you, they used the Ramkol, the um, loudspeaker, one of the soldiers, and said, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Achad. He announced, he declared the oneness of God in the in the mosque, and this, of course, brought about a lot of uh, was on the news. What happened? Was this? He was repr- they were reprimanded. They were they were taken out, and the whole thing, whatever it was, you know, um, threatening them with punishment. I mean, instead of giving them a reward, the soldiers, the two soldiers that were involved, of saying Shmaisa, what did they do? Did they profane anyone? The opposite. They're declaring the oneness of God in the world. Our whole mission as as the people of Israel in the world, and here they were. Um, reprimanded for doing such an act. Of course, it's a part of the symptom of what's going on in our society, which has to change. But anyway, I want to take that, uh, that opening story and relate it, you know, to the portion, because if we look really in reality, if we look in the Torah, and we know that the symbol of the Jewish people is Shema Yisrael, and all in the most difficult hours we know when the terrible things that took place on the October 7th, many secular Jews, people so far away, the last moment when they're in a situation of life and death situations, the Jew somehow instinctively says, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Achad. He's shouting out the oneness of God. We all know that that's something that we must try our best um, to always, should be the last words on our lips as we leave this world until 120. I remember another story of my mother-in-law. When she, um, back in 2014, and um, she was in the hospital, and, uh, and we were called right after Shabbat to come over to, to separate from her, that the doctor said that she, over Shabbat she caught pneumonia, and then she was on her deathbed, and I came with my wife and one of my daughters, we ran over quickly um, to see, you know, go to quickly where she was um, in the hospital. And um, I remember she was totally in a, in a coma and difficult breathing, and, um, you know, and I, and I told Leah, you know, I'm going to say Shema with her. We felt, you know, that her, her end was coming and she wasn't able to say Shema because she was in a coma. And I'll say Shema for her. And I said those words, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Achad. And at that moment, it was something that I'll never forget that scene. And she opened her eyes and she shed a tear. And at that moment, she passed away. Literally, at that moment, she passed away. And the monitor went blank, and um, we right away called the doctors, and, and that, that moment she, she, she left the world her soul. But the, when I said those words, Shema Yisrael, at her deathbed, immediately it, re, it, said, it said something, a response in her, an instinctive response as a Jew has, and her eyes opened right away, and she, she gained conscience for that moment of saying Shema, which was something, um, something that's literally, if I didn't, wasn't there myself to see it, it's hard to believe but that concept of Shema is something that's so innate within the people of Israel. Is something we have to try to understand, you know, where, where it begins and how did, um, how did it evolve, this whole thing. And something so important, we must find it in the Torah, of course. And we know, of course, the word Shema Yisrael, saying Shema Yisrael, is one of the commandments in the Torah, which appears in the book of Dvarim, Deuteronomy, which is the first time actually it appears in its full form, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elkeinu, Hashem Achad, where Moshe Rabbeinu is, is, um, tells Israel, you know, to fulfill that commandment, as we know, it's mentioned, you could look in Deuteronomy, it's in, cha- it's in Parshat Vetchanan, chapter 6, verse 4. And, um, but in reality, it appeared beforehand, it, it, appear, be, it appears beforehand in the Torah, but more of a form of hints, not directly. And the first time it appears is in the book of, of Genesis, in Bereshit, in chapter 12, where, where Abraham comes back to the land of Israel. I'm saying coming back because we know in reality the land of Israel is like the Garden of Eden. And when the first man and woman were chased out of the Garden, it was Abraham who began the return. And when Abraham comes back to the land and he comes to the place of Shechem, entering the land of Israel, what does it say? It says, Vayavo Avram ba'aretz. 
Ad Mikom Shechem Adelon Moreh, we can look in Genesis 12, verse 6, and here we see very powerfully hints of Shema. And this I, I found this mentioned in a book that quotes the Baal Shem Tov, the great famous Hasidic master, and who mentioned that here the, the Shema is hinted, and he brings down the hints. Number one, it says, Ad Mikom Shechem Adelon Moreh. If you all know, if you look in the Torah, in the portion of Etchanan and in Deuteronomy, we know that the two letters that are written larger are Ayin Dalad, which spell out aid, meaning witness. Those are the two letters that have to be written, according to our tradition, in a larger form. And here, in that verse, it says, Abraham comes to the place of Shechem, Ad, so the letters Ayin Dalad are mentioned, but it's not only mentioned once, it's mentioned twice, right? Ad Mekom Shechem, Ad Deilon Moet, to stand out. To, to, to stress that this is hinting to that witness, those two letters that are witnesses testifying to the oneness of God. But not only that, Ad Mekom Shechem is an anachronym. If we take the first letter of every one of those um, you know, words, Ad is Ayin, Mem is uh, Mekom, and Shechem, Shin. Ayin Mem Shin, what does it spell? Shma. And the reverse, it's a hint for Ol Malchut Shemayim, the yoke of heaven. So it's fascinating that they actually Shema's hinted within the verse itself. In those two ways I just showed you. But there's another hint. What does it say? Ad Mekom Shechem. Shechem, as we know, is another name, you know, where Abraham comes to the place of Shechem, Elon Moreh. Shechem is an, an acronym for something else. What do we say after we say Shema? We say, Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. So Shechem is Shem Kivod Malchuto. It's the first letter of every one of those words. So it's fascinating how we see here regarding Abraham Entering the land, the Shema plays a role right away. So it's obviously the beginning of our history. The first father of Israel is mentioning the Shema here. It's hinted within his arrival to the land. And I've, I've given lessons on that, how outside the land we're scattered, we're not one nation, but we're united. And now that Abraham comes back to the land in, in total unification, he can now take upon himself the oneness of God, unifying God, the Yehud Hashem, as we say. And that's the first time we see it hinted. Now, if we follow in this week's portion, which is, of course, um, Vayichi, which we're completing the, the, the book of Genesis, I want to show you there's a beautiful Talmudic um, passage in Psachim, the tractate of Psachim 56a, and I'd like to read part of that um, Gemara. And the Gemara teaches like this, and I'm going to try to read part of it to us over here. And the Gemara says like this. Um... Okay, where should I begin? Yeah, okay. Bikesh Yaakov legalot levanav ketsa yamin. It says Jacob wanted to reveal to his children ketsa yamin. Ketsa yamin could mean different things. The end of time, the messianic time. Um, and the divine presence left Jacob. So he was, when Jacob comes, and we read about it in, the, in this week's portion, with Jacob, towards the end of the portion, Jacob gathers all his sons together, and he's blessing each one, but so he gathers them together, and he says, you know, hey, asfu, gather, and I will tell you what's going to be at the end of days. And here, at that moment, uh, our rabbis teach us in this Talmudic passage that Jacob wanted to reveal to his children the end of time, you know, in order to strengthen their faith. When is, when is it going to happen? When are we going to actually, when is Messiah coming? When are we going to see our final building of our temple, when is all this going to happen? And at that moment, the Divine Presence lifted and left him. And right away he was very afraid. So, Amar Shema Chas Shalom, Yesh B'mitati P'sul, he said, Oh, God forbid, do I have one of my, in my children, do I have, literally, he thought that maybe in his family, he has a child that is, is not, is rendered not kosher, <laughs> not a proper child, just like the Gemara goes on, just like Ishmael, who came out of Abraham, or just like um, Esav, who came out of Isaac, he's saying. So he was, he was afraid maybe one of the children, one of his 12 children, are not um, suitable to be part of the house of Israel. And therefore, that's the reason why the Divine Presence um, left him. Amulo Banav, at that moment, his children come and they say to him, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. So right away they said they came out and said, "No, listen, Israel, God is one. God, our Hashem, our God is one." So right away, um, and they go on to say, "Kashem she'ain belipcha Father, just like in your heart, 
God is totally unified. There's only, there's only room for one God in our heart. So the, the children are declaring their allegiance to Hashem. There's only one God in the world. That moment God, Jacob comes out and says, Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto Lolam Veri. Right? Blessed your name. Baruch Shem Kivod Malchuto. In the honor of your throne, your kingdom, forever. So, the, basically, at that moment, um, Jacob was lifted to a high level, of, of course, spiritual level, and he was, he was totally calmed down when he saw all his children were on that page, the same page with him, in faith. Um, and really, it's really interesting, because in here, we can continue the whole thing. We know it's not mentioned at all. I, I, I showed you, it was hinted with Abraham. But it's not mentioned with Moshe Rabbeinu. So our rabbis say, you know, what's going to, how could we say Baruch Shein Kavod Malchuto if Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, doesn't mention it in the book of Deuteronomy. So the idea is to mention it, you know, and that's the, 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 the um, reasoning the Talmud comes up with. At the end, that we should mention it in, a, in quietly, not out loud. You know, why we should mention it out loud? Because Moshe, in order to honor Moshe Rabbeinu, we're not going to mention it out loud, because he didn't mention it, but we're going to mention it in honor of Jacob, quietly which is really fascinating. The Talmud brings down an well, interesting mashal. It's, it's, it's likened like a, the daughter of a king that she has, she smelled, uh, you know, the bottom of a pot, something really, a meat that was cooked very, very well, very, very delicious smell. And she had like a desire to have this. And, um, yeah, because she was, had this urge, right, this, this terrible urge to have this meat. So, um, the, the, the um, servants, Right away said, Im tomal yesh la if, we, if we announce this that the daughter of the king wants to have this meat, if we announce it to everyone, it's going to, um, it's going to, bring, a, it's going to bring her a lot of pain because obviously it's going to demean her in a way that there, you know, she doesn't look like she's, she's like ra- you know, ravishing for meat. It doesn't sound so well. And, you know, the, and also the burnt part of the pot, you know, that's a really tasty meat in the bottom, whatever it is, doesn't seem something so queen-like, whatever it is, or princess-like. So what they did was they, they brought it to her slowly and, 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 and they brought it to her secretly. They brought it to taste from that very secretly. It's a very deep, of course, uh, mashal, a deep parable. We're not going to go there now. Connecting to Baruch Shein Kavod Malchuto Lodonet, that's something extremely deep. And in order to understand that, I'm going to a little bit discuss this. It, it's, refle- it ref- it's reflected in another Midrash, which talks about when Moshe Rabbeinu goes to the heavens and Moshe Rabbeinu actually hears the angels reciting and he takes the secret and brings it down um, he brings it down to earth and that secret is what the angels recite but it's something that we have to keep quietly because it's really something on the level of angels but again we have to try to understand you know, what this all means and I'm going to of course try to explain this all but that was so at that moment I just mentioned to you how we see that Jacob is now totally relieved of his, of his concern. Why is the Divine Presence um, jump away when he began to get to reveal to his children the end of days? And it definitely wasn't for the reason of their lack of faith. That he was assured and he, was, he received assurance. And the, one of the reasons explained is that in reality they weren't ready to hear the time of the end of days because it was still a far way off and didn't want to weaken those. The family, of course, would be very, very strong in their faith and understanding. But it can weaken generations of Israel, not knowing when the end will be. We always have to have that, that feeling every moment the end could come at any moment. And now, of course, in our days, we live at a time, such a great time. But I want to, uh, from there, go on to show that we see a very, very important um, continuation of this. Shema Yisrael continues in the, in the Bible itself. So if we look in the, in the books of the Torah, I mentioned it's hinted twice in the book of Genesis, and then with Moshe Rabbeinu in the book of um, the Dvarim in the book of Deuteronomy. But if we look also in the prophets, we see later on that this is really the goal of the creation of the universe. And I can mention just a couple of those sources. For example, if we look in Ovadiah, the prophet, chapter 1, verse 21, it says, V'alu moshi'im b'hal tzion, lishpot et harisav. The end of days, moshi'im, right, we're talking about the sare Israel, or the ministers of Israel. They will go to Mount Zion, to judge the mountain of Esav. Esau's mountain refers to, to that whole Malchut Edom. 
those that are trying to eliminate the oneness of God in the world, and Vaital Hashem Melucha. At that moment, there will be the Melucha. The kingship will be will be to God. In other words, what we're saying, Boch Shen Kvod Malchuto, blessed, you know, Boch Shen, blessed your name of your your Kvod, your honor of your kingship, forever. That the kingdom of God will be revealed in the world at the end of days, as we see here, will be part of our the battle, the spiritual battle here against to judge the Esav, the Amalek forces in the world. Right? Not only it's a physical battle against to eliminate, eradicate Amalek, as we're doing now, but it's also a spiritual battle. And we reveal the oneness of God at the end of days. So we see that very, very clearly in that verse in um, Ovadia. We also look, there are two other verses I should point out. As well, if we also look in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 14, it again says, Vaya Shem Lemelech, God will be king al kol aretz over the whole world. At that time, God will be one and His name will be one, exactly what we're referring to in the Shema. So this is something that the whole mankind, eventually will, Israel will have to bring this upon mankind. So our symbol that we're bearing for, over, for time and memorial has to be brought to the nations at the end of, at the end of days. And that's um, another sign of this. And then if we look, there's another one, of course, in the famous book of Tzfanya, Tzfanya the prophet. Who at that, uh, well, here also we see some of the actual um, usage of the words that bring us ba- back to Shechem, because Tzvanya men- mentions in chapter three, verse nine, "Ki azefoch et amim safabu." I will, I will turn the nations into one language to l'kol kulam b'shem Hashem. They will all call out in God's name, "Lo Shechem Echad," to serve God. Shechem Echad again. Shechem shein kvod malchuto. Um, it's hinting to the city of Shechem, it's hinting to Shechem, meaning one, to work, go God in one unified way, and that's also mentioned by Tzfanya. So we see this concept of Shema throughout the entire Bible, from the beginning, from Genesis, all the way through um, to the last prophets of Zechariah, which is fascinating, and that's the, our Tikkun Olam. And in order to understand the power of Shema, I'll just quickly mention, and there's so much to talk about, because obviously this topic is, is a long topic, but I want to mention... There's a great rabbi we all are familiar with, the Ramchal of Moshe Chaim Letzato, who wrote the famous Misilat Yeshurim, the, the guide to the um, Misilat, the path of the just, and also Derech Hashem, he wrote many books. But another book that he wrote is Introduction to the Kabbalistic Teaching, it's called Derech Hashem, I've mentioned it before. And he talks about Kriyat Shema, and he talks about that mitzvah, the importance of Shema, and he says that there are different levels. And when a person says Shema, and this is actually, it's almost as we're doing some kind of, um, in, in, and we say in Hebrew, uh, uh, immun, like an exercise. And what do, we, what do we mean an exercise? Is that we say Shema, we have to literally try to imagine the people of Israel saying Shema. When we say this, we have to imagine as if we're actually giving ourselves over totally, B'Kidush Hashem, and it's a very high level. A person saying Shema, here Israel, God is one. Um, the The... Kabbalistic understanding, and this is what he's bringing down, the Ramchal, is that there's a tremendous divine light that comes upon us and it rectifies the entire creation. And, and we have to feel within our, within our inner essence how we are giving ourselves totally to God. In other words, when, the, when there's something that's challenging the oneness of God in the world, we will be willing to give our lives for the sake of such a, a, a um, challenge. That's something very hard to live up to, but that's something in our thoughts, you know, not, in, not in practicality when we're saying Shema, obviously we want to live 100 to 120, but something that we have to think in that way. But he goes on to say, you know, that obviously if this is in, in reality, this, those who give their lives to Hashem, you know, obviously no one's God forbid looking to give their life, but if someone is in that situation, as we mentioned, and now when, when people are in battle and it happens every day, that unfortunately we're burying soldiers and every single day. And, um, and we see and, and the, the tremendous faith that the beings revealed through this and everyone. And he's saying when, at that moment when someone says the words Shema Yisrael at that moment, here before Jacob was passing, he met his sons and they all said Shema Yisrael. And that is something that has become, of course, our, again, a symbol of Israel. And he talks about something which is really very powerful, how this effect of, of, of Mesut Nefesh, of giving over, through Shema Yisrael will bring tremendous light to the world. And 
you know, I thought about it, you know, we all know after the Holocaust, the terrible tragedy of six million Jews that were murdered, we saw the formation of the State of Israel. In other words, all the Jews didn't die for, for, for nothing. At the end, we don't understand God's ways, but we do know is that a tremendous light, all those Jews shouting out, Shema Yisrael brought about a tremendous change in the world to a step forward as we get approaching our third temple of the a return to the land of Israel. And now, during the, the wartime, again, when the Israel's called to the hour, and every single day um, people are falling in battle, which is beyond our, our realm of understanding, the, the, the amount of, of soldiers falling. And, um, you know, especially from Judea and Samaria, and we see the numbers here, it's like almost 50% of the numbers falling in battle. Um, and we see one rabbi that, I, that we know very well, Rav Yaniv, he buried in one year two grandsons and... and I'm um, sorry, two grand, three grandsons, two, the twin, not twins, but two boys in Hawar over here near Itama, when they were killed at Point Bank Range, they were murdered, and his son just fell this week in battle as well, another grandson, three grandsons in one year, and you see these amazing families, and you see the, 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 the wives, and you see the, the children, and you, you know, the sisters and the brothers, I mean, it's just something that, and you see their faith and their power, I mean, it's something that's beyond, it's beyond reason, the greatness of these people, and they're all, and everyone's reflecting and on Shema Yisrael. It's all coming back to that Shema Yisrael. God is one in the world and knowing that there's a mission, a mission of, of bringing the oneness of Hashem to the world. And that's really what we see day by day. Day by day we're seeing this now. And that, here the Ramchal is explaining the, in Der Hashem that this brings tremendous light. That's his words he uses. And he's saying, the light that will come down, what is the word I like to even quote exactly? He says, Yamshich he'ara gedola v'chazaka me'od It will bring down a tremendous light to the world and it's powerful V'yitakein v'bria tikun atzum and it will rectify a tremendous tikun a tremendous rectification in the world and this is what I said after the Holocaust we saw the formation of the state of Israel so after this difficult period that we're fighting for our again for our survival it's not a war on, on one front it's a war on many fronts and this war is part of the, the series of wars of the Armageddon, the end of days of Gog and Magog, we're fighting for the kingdom of Hashem in the world and to rectify that now. And it's really, we, we're in the, in the heat of battle in many different sides. We don't know how this is going to de- develop before Israel's victorious. And of course, Israel will be victorious. There's no doubt about that. But we don't know how things are going to develop. But we have to do know and focus on this. We see coming from our camp, the camp that has the faith, is saying all the time, Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Achad. And what are the words used afterwards? Baruch Shein Kevod Malchuto. The other words that were said by Jacob, the, the Ramchal explains that that's said quietly. You know, we say it only on Yom Kippur when we're like the angels. We could say it out loud, but we say it quietly because we're not all on that level yet of the angels, right? We have to, Jacob was on that level to say it. But as the world unfolds and as Israel brings more and more light down to the world through this tremendous giving over, there's nothing more in this world when a person gives their life for the sake of the land, I mean, for the sake of the people, for the sake of, of goodness, of God in the world, that's the highest level, that in the place of these great soldiers, no one could stand, no one can come up to their finger, their toes or the finger of their, you know, their toes, um, because the, the ankles, whatever you want to call it, no one could stand in their place of these giants who have given their life for the sake of Israel. And that concept, and this understanding is what the Ramchal is talking about. This will bring tremendous light down. Again, we, wanna, we, we hope that the wars will stop. It doesn't have to be done through battle, through spirituality. But we have to understand when it is done this way and we see what's happening. The, the stories are so great, we can't even number the stories of, of the courageous heroes. I just think about when you read the book of, 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 um, the book of Samuel, about King David, David Melech, and see... The, the warriors that King David had, these are the warriors, the same continuation of those souls of the warriors that are fighting in battle. And as Goliath, Goliath comes to curse God, to curse the, the, um, the nation of Israel. And from morning and evening, just when we say the Shema in the morning and evening, and Israel comes, the opposite, he comes to declare the oneness of God. I come to you with the name of God, King David says. And that will bring about, that will bring the shame, kvod malchuto la'olam ve'ed, that will bring God's kingdom forever which will shine in the world. And we have to realize that that's what we're fighting for. Shabbat Shalom, Besorot Avod, Yeshuot Venechamot.
Let all our soldiers stay safe, God willing, and we will see a tremendous light very, very soon. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye.